Hello everyone, welcome again to LIS 2360 Web App Development with me, Muhammad Prabu Ibowo. In this video, we will still continue our materials about JavaScript. For lesson 7, I prepared lecture notes. These are some important to know resources for JavaScript when you want to implement it in the browser. In lesson 7, there are no lab activity, so you just need to do participation activity and challenge activity. And don't forget about the quiz, the canvas quiz. If you are on the modules, on the bottom of the page, I enabled new extra credits assignments. So there are two extra credit assignments. The first one is grade distribution and the, first, the second one is move the image with a timer. As extra credit assignments, these are optional. You will get an extra up to 10 points in each assignment. The first extra assignment is lab assignment on grade distribution. As usual, you need to read all of the instructions carefully. And this is the example of the results. And as usual, there are downloadable files where, that you can download. And you can load it to your development environment and edit it. Once you finish edited the file, you can always submit for grading. And the second one is extra credit on move the image with a timer. In this extra credit assignment, you are asked to move an image with a timer. So this is a hard image and you will have downloadable files. I will cover this extra assignment in the next video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I will focus more on implementing JavaScript in web browser. There are 12 parts in lesson 7. In the first part, we will learn the basics of implementing JavaScript in HTML. So JavaScript is useful on modifying web page and also to make the web page to become more interactive. And to do that, JavaScript can modify the DOM. We have covered the materials on DOM in previous video tutorials. So if you still confuse what the DOM is, you may want to rewatch the previous video tutorial. So JavaScript treats web page content as a set of related components and every element on web page is an object and you can also create objects because a function itself is an object and besides DOM there is also BOM or browser object model it is a hierarchy of objects and each provides programmatic access to a different aspect of a browser window or web page so we can modify the window object and represent a web browser window so it's called global object and window in browser object can be anything it can be history can be location it can be navigator so DOM or document object model so document object can represent the web page displayed in a browser the DOM itself contains all the web page elements it can be paragraph it can be header it can be table so all of this all of these elements represent the document object in the website and javascript represents each element by its own object so by modifying the dom it allows javascript to create a dynamic html or dhtml because the interaction can change the content of web page without reloading and it can also change the presentation of the content so basically the html is a combination of html css and javascript and DOM can be an example of an application programming interface or API. It can be a structure of object with set of properties and methods. This is the example of DOM tree. So the first example of DOM, we can use document write line or write ln method. So I would like to review the previous video tutorials. Previously, we learned using document write so this is the example so without javascript the web page is only h2 working with string when we add javascript so i write h1 p 
and then paragraph and specific variable string string variables and then when we preview it it can modify the elements in the web page we learn on using write so next we learn write line so write line is similar with write it's modifying the element in the web page so in this example um, without any javascript it's only an h2 example of dom example one write line when we add the javascript it will write a new line hr and then center of my name so when i preview it this is the h2 this is the horizontal rule and then center my name so right line is the first example of modifying the dom so we can also use javascript to modify the window object so window object can be anything so window can be anything it can be history it can be location it can be a navigator it can be a screen or the document so this is called browser object model so you can use w3 schools as your resources there are a lot of type of window object in javascript codes you can modify all of them so i have an example with me right now you can post the video if you want to write the code into your development environment so in here basically i'm modifying the window by using window alert so we can use alert confirm open we can also use prompt so for alert we can also omit window dot but it is a good practice to keep window so when we preview it happy sunday okay and then second one without window happy monday and prom prom is asking you how are you doing so we can modify the window object using javascript so console we can also present the content of javascript in the console log so console log is not presented to the user so here i have an example on the console log you can post the video if you want to write the codes and let's refresh it so how to show the console log is you can use preview to new window you can use tools you can click on the menu tools web developer web console so here this is only appear in the console log so we can use console log console warn console error console we already cover this about loading javascript from an external file in the previous video tutorial so i will so let's move on on the the dom or document object model so this is the example of dom in html it can be element nodes shown by green html head body and it can be a text node paragraph title it can be a property for example in the shown in pink so searching the dom we can select or get element by id we can get elements by tag name and also get elements by class name and we already covered this about dom in the previous video tutorial let's review the previous material so we when we use get elements by id it will select the id so id can be used once in a web page it will get the id of in the web page and when you use get elements by class name it will obtain the arrays of class name so in here for example i have several classes we can get the first class you can also use get elements by tag name for example i'm using p and also it will also obtain the arrays of p tags so when i am using four it means it is the fifth array so when we preview it we can change the id's content you can also change the class first array you can also change the fifth paragraph remember when we use get element by id there is no s here because it only refer to one id only and if we are using get elements by class name it should be followed with s elements because it will acquire arrays of classes when we use get elements by type name it's also produce arrays so we need to use s so those are, those are the differences between get element by id and get elements by class name and get elements by type name 
we can also implement it in in the button for example on click get element by id demo and we can use you know html javascript change the html content you can preview it see there's a change in the content and i also have lecture notes so in lecture notes i have dom interactive exercise there's also tutorials on dom so here i have example on javascript dom tutorials that you can access the dom and then manipulating the dom and the dom events and server request so every lesson has its own answer but before you see the answer try your best to have to answer it correctly so read the instruction again write some javascript code below that finds the above image element using get element by id so we as we can see image is having an id of star and source star off so we need to change into off to on star on the gif document document get element by id star it will change the source from star off to star on yes and we got it correctly and there are four tutorials manipulating dom events and asynchronous server request so you can practice by yourself so next is about event driven programming or event handler or event listener an event is an action usually caused by a user that the web browser responds to it can be a mouse movement or key press or response from a web server so we can increase the interactivity of a website or the apps that we are building and i have an example of the codes about event handling you can post a video if you want to write the codes to your development environment so here i have a button i have an id my button click me and in my javascript i have selecting a button element i'm creating a new variable button and to get this button i can use get element by id my button and then we can call a function when the button is clicked so we can say a function say hello and alert hi how are you doing and i am creating a function to be called when the mouse over event occurs so when we are hovering the mouse pointer the button will change its background to yellow so we can use set hover color and in next one i am creating a function to be called when the mouse is out it is set normal color so this is the default color of the background of the button and in the next code i have registered the click event so button add event listener click so it will call the function of say hello and when the mouse is over i'm calling set hover color and when the mouse is not hovering the button it will set normal color so we can save this code and when we preview it event handling so as you can see when i'm hovering the mouse pointer to the button it will change the background into yellow when i click it it will call the function of say hello it has an alert of hi how are you doing today so this is the example of event handling that's all the material for this video tutorials. I will cover more on the extra assignments and further about JavaScript in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. See you again in the next video tutorial.